day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey everybody, I hope you're still staying safe and I hope you're keeping one another in prayer concerning the, the, the battle we're facing with this COVID-19. And, and you know, and pray for the fact is that a lot of people, when they find those people, those numbers uh, are devastating concerning people who died, and then the numbers of the people filing unemployment is also a, a tragedy in itself because we're talking about people who need money we talking about businesses that need money to survive, and and, and we we need to pray for the leadership in this country, in the state, in the federal and local level leaders to to come up with means and guidelines that that allow us to open safely, because if we go out there and and and, and cause a spike, we got a problem. But if we go in there doing things the right way, keep that social distancing, uh, and then keep lifting each other in prayer. But the main thing too is just remember that we, we have to uh, use wisdom and, and understanding and, and, and continue to, to lift up our medical staff, uh, the, and like I said, the leaders in this country <clears throat> to do the right thing. But our part is to, to we always continue to trust in the Lord and hear from Him. And that's what we're talking about today is how to hear from God. He speaks to us in visions and dreams. And those visions, He's speaking to our spirit. You know, a lot of cases, when we, uh, at least where I work at, when we give briefings, a lot of cases we put a lot of pictures in there because pictures paint what you're trying to say. Pictures brings in an image. You know, like when you're talking, for example, if I say apple, you now have an image that your mind came up with concerning an apple. Someone came with a yellow apple, some came with red apple, some came with green apples. Uh, but we, we come up with things based on the thoughts. So I hope you enjoy the video and God bless you. Bye-bye. So Elder, give us a prayer, man. Give us a prayer. Father God, forgive us our sins that we may be worthy to stand before you in prayer. We thank you again for this time of fellowship. Thank you, Father God, for your presence in the midst of us. We thank you, Father, that every time we go through this world, you bring out something new in it. We pray, Father, that you continue to touch our hearts, our souls, touch our minds, Lord God. Open our minds up to receive your revelation on your word. Bind us together in one accord, even as we come into your presence to study your word, Lord God. Give us the same understanding, the same the same view that you have. Communicate to us through your spirit, Lord God. We pray in your holy name. Strengthen us that others might see you in us and be drawn to you and receive eternal life, even as we have. These things I pray in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. 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 Hey, hey Bishop, we left off where we were talking about this particular scripture, and I wanted to bring it up. Let me see if I can bring it up one second. We can pick up from there. Brother Adam said that was, we, we hit we hit Chronos time instead of Kairos time. Yeah. And I wanted to uh, make sure we get a chance to, to view that. Let me get this out of the way. I guess I should have put it out of the way. One second. And Chris, you look like you got that itis, man. Okay, bro. It's been a long day, bro. It's been Look, a long I just, day. Hey, I just finished eating, so I'm I'm waiting on the Holy Spirit. <laughs> 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 I got the sun shining through my window. I need to go close that. So have your way, Holy Spirit. Have your way, right? <laughs> but uh, let me let me throw this up there. Y'all can't see nothing yet, right? Not yet. All right, here it is. Now that's the that's the commission, ain't it? Mm -hmm. We did. It was a what was it? What was that? Daniel. Uh, it was Daniel four, wasn't it? 
Wh which one you did, Evelyn? I mean, Bishop? It was Daniel 4, wasn't it? Uh, Daniel 4. I, I think it was Daniel 4, because we're talking about hearing his voice. Uh, let me get, let me stop this sharing real quick. I'm going to pull up each sword. I thought that was Exodus 18. Well, Exodus 18 was Exodus. It was, uh, what did it say? Uh, it was, uh, you went first to, one second, I think I got it. Yeah. I could have sworn it was a, it was a, you didn't do Daniel. What's Chris, do you remember? Daniel, I'm going to say, what's Daniel for? I thought we were talking about when he took him out to the mountain to speak to him. Is yeah, he, he he was explaining it was Deuteronomy. Yeah, that was Deuteronomy. It was Deuteronomy and it was I think it was four and then verse twelve. Eleven. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. Let me let me share this real quick. I think y'all can see, I think y'all can read the uh, Esau anyway. It's, it's Deuteronomy chapter 4. And what I was getting at, you said 11 and then 12. Can y'all see it? Yeah. So, 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 Bishop, what we we're, we're riding on the fact is that the critic, you know, Chris was talking about the importance of hearing his voice, and why did he talk to them on Exodus and the Mount, you know, in Exodus chapter twenty? That's when Jimmy brought up Exodus chapter twenty, and he was talking about when you know they saw the lightning, they saw the thundering, and and and, and then they said, Moses, you go talk to him, and 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 then you you you, you showed us Deuteronomy chapter four where he's explaining about the lightning and the thundering and that, that he was holding the tent was for them to hear his voice. Yes, uh, Deuteronomy chapter four is a further explanation of Exodus chapter 18. Oh, 18 as well? Okay. Yeah, Exodus 18 is when, when they actually told Moses, uh, uh, He wasn't 20. The 20 is when he actually came down with the fire and everything. He talked to them. Um, okay, let's see. Yeah. 20, 20, 20. 20, 20 yes, 20. chapter 20. 20 is correct. Yeah, 20. Yeah, 20 right here is where, this is when he came down, Psalms, verse 17. Yeah. And, and do not before it's an explanation of what God was. Now Moses is explaining to why God did what he did. Exactly. Right. Right. You know, I think he even said it here too, didn't he? He said it uh, uh, in 20, verse 20, and Moses said to the people, fear not, for God has come to prove you. I come, he come to test you. Yes. And that his fear may be before your faces. Brother, I said that you sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And, and the piece I was getting the fact is they were sitting there telling them, uh, Moses, you 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 go ahead and speak to him. <laughs> We're gonna go over here and grab some of these fig leaves. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, verse 18, like you said, that verse 18, uh, all the people, Chris, look, that's what I'm saying is it's a different between the paradigm here. That's say that paradigm, that now I'll call it a paradigm shift. That's a paradigm shift Chris talking about, but it, 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 it's reminiscent of Genesis when God came and talked to Adam and Eve. Yeah. And they hid themselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it looks like man been hiding themselves because yeah. we don't really want to be in the presence of God. Yes, sir. Huh? <laughs> it, it's easy to put put some false fig leaves on, put some false ministry on. 
Mm-hmm. Hey, because what all you really want is something to interfere to go that you can blame it on when you don't get the right word or you you do something and get out of place. Well, maybe he didn't tell it to me right. You just want you just want to have something in the way. Exactly. Yeah, trumpet. Hey, hey, Bishop, because he's trying. Because look at this, uh, Chris, in verse th- in chapter thirty-two. Hey, look, Chris. Read that for us. 32. You can just read 32 and uh uh yeah, just verse one. Okay. And when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods which shall go before us. For as this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we want not. What is become of him? There's an excuse, ain't it? Yes, sir. We don't know what happened to him. <laughs> and, that, and that's what we're talking about where you got sometimes traditional churches sit there and say, the pastor read to us. The, 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 the pastor pray for us. The, the, yes, sir. The, we, we're going to we'll go, we're gonna get this system resolved through the pastor. Mm-hmm. We, we don't want to go to God. Look, Craig, we don't want to go to God. Oh no, 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 no. No, no, no. We we don't want to hear from him. Mm-hmm. And 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 so so Bishop, I'm saying is that we went back to your this is what we left off at was Deuteronomy chapter four. Like you said, this is where he was explaining it to us. Well, and I was looking at verse 12 though, is what we left off at. <laughs> That's where you was left off at verse 12 of 4. And I think Addison was saying 11 and 4, right? 11 and 12, right? Yeah. Well, it's, it's interesting in Deuteronomy chapter 4, in verse 12, that he, he makes, if you, you know, I pay attention to it because I think it's, it's significant. Yeah, I think, yeah, which it? First says, and the Lord spake unto you. This is Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 12. Yeah. The Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. Ye heard the voice of the word, but saw no similitude. Only ye heard a voice. Yes, sir. Now, now, it's interesting because, you know, God doesn't want you. Not to be able to have put a put a form with this voice, right? Yes, yes, no form at all. So, so, so initially, M- Moses that Moses is going up to the cloud. Moses is, is is hearing God, and then Moses is coming back, and he's being like the mediator. But then, when you, when you get to John, John says, "And the Word became flesh." Woo. Now God decided, okay, this time when I talk to y'all, I'm going to take form. I'm going to take your similitude. I, I'm going to come in a form that you can deal with. You ain't got to be, it won't be scary at all, eerie. I'm going to take on your form. I'm going to come and dwell in your midst, and I'm going to speak to you. But now that's a hard thing for, for them to, to grab mm. because they never, could, they know it never entered their mind that this almighty creating God could take on the likeness of man and dwell in the very midst of them. And John said, that which was from the beginning, which we have seen, which we have, with our eyes have looked upon, which our hands have handled of the word of life, for the life was manifested. And we've seen it. Yes, sir. So back then, this is a preparation. Are you going to hear my voice later on? But it won't be through Moses. I'm gonna come down there myself. <laughs> yeah, it ain't gonna be in the thunder and the lightning. <laughs> and so you have no it. reason, and you'll find out that that though God did initially deal with you to cause you to be fearful, and like I said, I think fear is the initial stage that all of us have to pass through before we can get to understand that God is also loving. He ought to be feared now. But he does not want you just to relate to him based on fear. 
right? You know, operate and relate them based on law. And just in case the law won't hold you, be a weird. Is that is that the you know uh, uh, Sherman was talking to uh, Addison today, brother Addison, and he was talking about fear. Mm -hmm. And one of the things, Elder, is and we're talking reverence or terror. You know, when you talk about fear, right? There's, there's two there's different forms of fear. This one, I, I assume this one is a reference to reverence, like that story, like Brother Addison gave last Sunday about Let his dad. Let me ask you a question. Were you reverence your daddy or you fear your daddy? <laughs> no, I had fear of my daddy. There's there, no question. Yeah. There was no question. My dad, it, he served one purpose. That's to bring, bring money in the house and the discipline. That was it. Listen, that was I had it. Experience with my dad. Now, later on, when I became an adult. I knew beyond a shadow of a doubt my dad loved me. There was right. no doubt in my right. mind. But I always kept this, 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 because I seen my daddy do some stuff. I said to myself, he will never have no problem out of me. <laughs> I saw my daddy pick up the foot in on a truck off the ground with his bare hands. And so I saw other guys who would talk back to their dad and say stuff. So. I, I ain't never had that problem. <laughs> hey, hey, but, yeah, but, but you hugged them too, though, didn't you? You uh, hugged them. Yes. You laughed with them. Yes. I, and and I'm saying is I think I think it was it was it was, it was a part more levels of reverence, and the fear was the wrath of being disobedient. But the pride was, hey, that's my dad. Yes. And I think God is in there saying that I do got a wrath. If, if you don't think I don't have one, I, I'll let you know about it. But the part he really wants was that, I'm thinking is that relationship of reverence and in comfort and in peace is what I'm trying to say. I think Jesus had something to say about that. OK. I think Jesus said, uh, uh, let me see if I can find this text where it says, uh, destroy the body. Yeah. Remember Jesus Don't was fear man, but who can take your, your life, but fear God. Yeah. Who can take your, your soul and your body. Soul and your body. That word, yeah, kill not them. them which kill the body, but are able to kill the soul. Yeah. And fear yeah. not which kill the body, but I'm not able to kill the soul. But rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Now that word fear is terrified. Terrified. <laughs> He said that word fear is basically <laughs> <is> terrifying. <laughs> yeah. To be struck with fear, to be seized with a law. This is not talking about reverence. This which chapter? About fear. Which chapter? Which chapter? You this is uh, Jesus in Matthew chapter 10, verse number 28. Chapter 10, verse 28. Now, let's, 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 let's chew on that for a second. Let me see here. Yeah. Right. You know, Francis Chan got a whole sermon on, on this, this topic about this fear. Francis Chan said, it is not reverence. It is terror. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. T verse one. Said, to be in awe. <laughs> you're so what? fearful, you're in awe. <laughs> hey, verse one. G what, what, 53, what? Uh, 1020, 1028, I think it is. 1028, all right. The Greek word is. Fabeo. Strong G, 5399. Fabeo. 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 To frighten, that is, passively, to be alarmed, 
an analogy to be at all. Uh, they there's revere. Yeah, no, but it's after extremely <laughs> fear. <laughs> and then the word reverence. And, and yeah, reverence is at the end. Reverence at the end. Well, I guess the question is, if it says, wait a minute, let me see. What does the scripture says? Well, trust in the Lord all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy mind. Where's the one that said, I said, is that also said, love the Lord that God? Or With that, all that heart. huh? With all that heart, all that soul, that mind. It says that, right? It does. Right. So, so, so I, I'm applying, Brother Addison, that, that it may be the word reverence may be the most logical one. I think it, it's, it may be. I can't be, I can't be, I can't be. So frightened of you that I love you at the same time. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, I mean, I I wanted my dad to die, and I loved him. Come on now. <laughs> see, see now, now, hey, Chris, now, I don't know if you that. You, so I don't think that's what God wants, right? No, I'm not yeah. saying, but I'm just you. You were saying that you can't fear and love at the same time. <laughs> I love my dad, right? But he was such a, a taskmaster. <laughs> It, you know, it, it's, he, he was just, I mean, there was no joy in this man, mm -hmm. as far as I was concerned. Right. And there was times I was like, man, God, just kill him. <laughs> so, so, so basically saying, though, here is that, that based on the scriptures, he, he, he wants, he said, my burdens are easy, my yokes are light. Love the Lord that God with all that heart, with all that soul, all that mind. He came in with Jesus' concept. Instead of saying God, he called him Father. That that sounds that sounds a little more like reverence than maybe than terror. But that comes saying. later, though. That, Remember that, 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 that's, that's a the different time. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you a question. Was that reverence that they experienced when they went out to that mountain and saw that fire? Was that reverence or was that terror? That was terrified. They were terrified. But but you know, Bishop, the problem. What about had, when Anna and Sapphira was swallowed up? You think that they they <laughs> everybody else, you know, was just reverence God? <laughs> I mean, or or reverence the move of God? Yeah, you have to ask the question. What is the Why isn't that God wants to is. That fear is the beginning of wisdom. Beginning yeah. of wisdom. Fear, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So it's right. like it's a progressive move. If you look at the cardinal nature, the cardinal nature did not respond well to compassion and love and stuff. Cardinal nature, you can't spank it. That's why we're given the direction to chasing our children to inflict pain when their behavior is not in accordance with what the standard is. You have to use another deterrent because you can't reason with that nature. It's a fallen nature. So if you ain't scared of it at first, <laughs> you know, you ain't gonna comply. Look at a kid. If you don't spank a kid, they'll beat you. Mm. Now, so that is, and that's the truth. Right. It, that, that's a true scripture because I was very wise. I knew I knew how I, I was so methodical when I did something that was wrong. I made sure <laughs> that I wasn't getting caught. <laughs> so yes, wisdom comes with fear. Amen. But you, but you know, fear. I think the problem I think with fear, in the term we refer to, is one does not change the heart, opposed to reverence. The reason I'm saying that is yeah, that, no, that's that's a good word. Yeah, because read the Deuteronomy twenty thirty two we just read. It didn't take but a minute. Father, I'm sir. I mean, we moved from twenty, and then we go all the way to thirty two. And they sit there and said, because what I'm trying to say is that mountain was still there. Mm -hmm. That cloud that Moses went into was still there. Even the lightning and probably the thunder was still there. But all they wanted to focus, once they pass on to Moses as taking responsibility, then when Moses didn't show up, they blamed all on Moses.
Now, even you, brother, I'm going to use you for example, he, he, out of sight, a little, little, little uh, cunningness, you did some stuff. Oh, no, I, I did plenty. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So, so. <laughs> Not a little stuff, but a lot. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. I think, I think God is looking for a little bit more than just, you know, terror, because I don't think terror holds them. But I will say this, it, it took time before the dirt I did became, uh, you know, more and more before right. it, it progressed. Right. You know, first you, you get away with a little bit and you realize I got away because dad ain't around or dad yeah. don't. And then yeah. you kind of figure out, you know, that <laughs> the wisdom is, okay, if dad don't know, you ain't going to get in trouble. Exactly. Now, look at the difference between the one where you have a relationship where you, you, you value somebody's respect or opinion of you, and okay. you, you now anchored more toward doing the, the right thing of getting something done because of the value you have of not mm -hmm. disappointing somebody. Man. Well, that, that is I think that's developmental, man. The, the answer greatest answer. way to raise a child, if you can get them there. Okay, but look at this. Let, let me show you a verse. Because the thread of the thread of fear is the same throughout all the scriptures. In Jeremiah 32. All right, let me let me bring that up for you. Verse number 40. Jeremiah. He's not still speaking though. He just made it all the way down to Jeremiah. Is it 32, you say? Jeremiah 32, verse number 40. Okay. And I'm going to take it off of the, I'm put on regular text. Way down in 40. And then I'm going to share. Where's the share? There you go, Bishop. Okay, here we go again. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from them to do them good. Yes, sir. But I will put my fear in their heart that they may not depart from me. Okay. If you look this word fear up. Okay. Let's, let's hit that one. Let me see if I can hit it. It'll jump on me. Go all the way to 40. <laughs> 3370. Hebrew word 3374. 40, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. Morally, but they got a reference in there too, though, right? They got dreadful, exceeding fear. They just got that word reference in there too. Yeah, but the word reverence is only used. Let's see. And I like the word, you know, I like the part that says it morally reverence too. Well, actually, uh, if you go over and look at the actual King James translation strong in the following manner, it's that word is translated three or four to one time, exceeding uh, twice, and then yes, yes. I don't even see. I don't even see reverence you. Huh? I don't see reverence. Oh, you talking about throughout the? Uh... But it's not in. It's not. It's not used. Okay. I just wonder is it in the translator that. And that's a, that's a translator prerogative when he was when he translating, and I, what what would be wrong with morally reverence? What are you looking at? Kid? What are you looking at? Says morally reverence. It's a you eight three three seven four. The you got feminine, I guess feminine feminine. Um, H three three seven three fear, also used as infinity infinity. Morally reverence. It's, it's H3374. 
Right. H three three seven four. Colin Strong has fear, terror, fearing. Dreadful. That's primary definition. Exceedingly fear. Has fear, terror, also a terrifying thing, object causing fear, fear of God. So. Uh, on the see, look on look on the look on the screen. They got this. They got this. Try. It just. I guess it don't take all of them. Just take some of them. And those are the words they took out of it. So what you have to do is, the way you really ought to do this is, uh, if you have a, a B-Day, yeah. if you have a B-Day, the B-Day will actually tell you which one of these definitions applies to this verse. Okay, okay. I mean, which one of these definitions actually apply to you? I think the, you know? I think the morally reverence is is the one that holds you to God more than fear, dreadful fear. Eventually, right? Or terror? Yeah, but otherwise, right? You want a relationship? That's what, what is what is reverence? On a personal note, I didn't I didn't I didn't come to God because I was, I was morally reverencing Him. Right, but I you, learned to do that after the beauty yeah. that I got. <laughs> you know, I understand. As I grew, that he was right. I mean, even with my parents, I didn't agree exactly. with my parents. I was just scared of them. Right. You, you know, you you wanted to play with the socket in the wall. You didn't know what's wrong with that. Okay, so let me ask you a question. You know what I'm saying? They keep you from killing yourself, but actually, you just stop doing it because you're scared of getting the beating. You don't know that if you actually succeed and stick in something in that socket, it's gonna take, it's gonna kill you. Right. And I think with me, with the relationship with the Lord was, I was scared of him. I grew I grew to fear him. First, yeah. Yeah. this is a question you always. The first thing I was, I was afraid of him, and then I started to make some changes and I understood why he was morally correct. You know what I'm saying? And right. then I because I realized he was keeping me out of trouble. He was keeping me out of hell. Right. 